Okay, uh, thanks a lot for invitation and uh, nice introduction. So um, it's my great pleasure to have this opportunity to give a talk at the CAU Help Center seminar. So today I'm going to talk about the axion, which is a hypothetical new particle, which has not been discovered yet, but has compelling theoretical motivation. So I'm going to discuss the prospect for the discovery of axions and uh, the interesting possibility of proving their microscopic origins. So this is the plan of the talk. So I'll first introduce the QCD axion, uh, the most important axion that has a uh, compelling theoretical reason. And I will also introduce other standard axions, the axions from uh, string theory and the axion dark matter. And I'm going to discuss the experimental search for uh, those axions, what is the, the current status and the future prospect to find them. Um, and finally, uh, I will discuss the possibility of uncovering the microscopic origin of axions by precision, low energy precision measurements. So uh, let's begin with the classical picture of the neutron. Neutron is composed of uh, three quarks, one uh, up quark and two down quarks. And uh, the up quark has the electric charge plus two third and the down quark has the electric charge minus one third. So the sum of them is zero. So the neutron is the uh, electrically neutral. But because of this internal structure, uh, the neutron can have a non-zero electric dipole moment and suppose that uh, these three quarks are positioned in this way with this angle theta. Actually, this angle theta is fixed by a certain standard model parameter, namely uh, quark mass phase and, and the uh, so-called QCD angle. But uh, you don't need to know what, what they are. Uh, at the moment, it's enough to know that the theta is uh, uh, some fixed constant within the standard model. And then uh, uh, from the, uh, the known neutron size, which is roughly given by the uh, inverse of the pion mass, uh, we can estimate the, uh, the expected electric dipole moment of a neutron uh, by this quantity. But uh, this classical estimation is, uh, turns out to be uh, somewhat bigger than the, the precise quantum mechanical uh, estimation. And the, uh, the the quantum mechanical calculation shows that uh, the actual value for the neutron EDM is uh, uh, given by uh, uh, this amount uh, for a small theta. So let's take uh, this value. But experimentally, a non-zero neutron EDM has not been observed yet. Actually, uh, the, any uh, electric dipole moment of any fundamental particle has not been observed yet. And the uh, experimental measurements only impose an um, upper bound on the possible magnitude of the uh, neutron EDM. And then it, that places this strong bound on the possible magnitude of neutron EDM. So then uh, to be compatible with uh, this experimental result of the theoretically predicted value, the theta has to be smaller than 10 to the minus 10. And this uh, small theta is puzzling uh, within the standard model because in the standard model, uh, as I said, theta is a fixed constant and it's supposed to be order one unless it's fine-tuned. So theta uh, turns out to be given by the sum of quark mass space and, and, and the QCD angle. But uh, this quark mass space is supposed to be uh, likely to be order one because we have already observed uh, uh, order one uh, quantum mass space in the uh, electroweak interaction. So it means that there uh, has to be a very uh, fine-tuned fine -tuned cancellation between these two quantity uh, to explain this small value of theta. So this is a serious fine-tuning problem of the standard model. And because uh, non-zero theta or uh, non-zero neutron EDM uh, breaks the uh, CP symmetry, this is named the strong CP problem. 
And an elegant solution to this problem was proposed a long time ago by Pechai Kim, Weinberg, and Wilczek. Uh, the problem is solved if the angle theta is dynamical rather than a fixed uh, constant. So suppose that theta is uh, some dynamical variable, flexible dynamical variable, then it seems uh, very plausible that the uh, quarks uh, spontaneously are aligned in this way so that the uh, quarks of opposite charge face against each other. Then the uh, neutron EDM becomes zero. Uh, actually, uh, indeed, it can be shown that the potential for theta is um, uh, has a, a minimum uh, when theta is uh, theta is theta is zero. So indeed, theta is dynamically relaxed to zero, and uh, this dynamical field is called the quantum chromodynamics axiom, the QCD axiom. Uh, and technically, the promotion of this theta to uh, dynamical field can be done by uh, assuming this uh, coupling between a between a scalar field and the Coulomb field of the uh, quantum chromodynamics. And um, yeah, so, and the, um, the uh, quantum excitation of this uh, scalar field is the, uh, gives a, a new particle, new light particle. And this new light particle is not uh, uh, present in the, in the standard model and uh, it's motivated by the by this strong the solution of this strong CP problem, and this Q section solution to the strong CP problem has turned out to be the most compelling solution to the strong CP problem. But uh, this light particle has not been discovered yet. So uh, the uh, most important element of the uh, Q section solution to the strong CP problem this uh, is this action gluon interaction. Uh, and uh, depending on the high energy physics model that can yield this excellent gluon interaction, uh, we can have also the excellent couplings to other standard model particles like the electric gauge bosons and quarks and lepton. So this is the uh, uh, general form of the uh, excellent Lagrangian density. So this is, uh, we have this uh, operator to solve this strong CP problem. And depending on the model, uh, we can have these other interactions. Here, these coefficients are uh, so high energy physics model dependent and generally supposed to be order one. So the excellent interaction strength is uh, characterized by the uh, by a single parameter, one over FA. Uh, and this FA is often called the uh, excellent decay constant. The Q section obtains a potential by interacting with uh, gluons non perturbatively, uh, namely by Q instanton effect and confinement effect. So, from this interaction uh, with uh, non this non perturbative process, it can be shown that the action obtains uh, action have uh, this potential, the periodic potential, uh, with a periodic field length 2 pi fa. And it has a minimum uh, at the point uh, the axion uh, bad becomes zero so that the uh, strong CP problem is solved, neutral EDM becomes zero. Uh, and by taking the second derivative of this potential, we get, the, uh, we get a formula for the axion mass uh, in terms of the uh, up cone mass, down cone mass, pi on mass and pi on decay constant and the axion decay constant. Here it is uh, quang mass and the pion uh, mass and decay constant parameters are uh, uh, experimental measure. So uh, only unknown quantity is FA. Uh, so if FA is fixed, then the action mass is uh, precisely uh, predicted. Uh, so if we uh, set the FA value uh, to 10 to 12 GeV, then the action mass is predicted to be 5.7 microelectron volt. Uh, and this reference value for the FA uh, uh, is the value that can explain the that can explain the um, dark matter of the universe by the Q axiom, as I will explain later. Mm. 
the QC axion couples to uh, neutrons and protons via the uh, uh, axion gluon interaction, whose strength is proportional to 1 over FA, as I mentioned before. And uh, astrophysical objects such as supernova and neutron star can efficiently cool down by emitting axion by uh, this process. So here, N and P as a neutron and proton, and by exchanging uh, pi on, they can emit axion. And by this process, uh, the supernova and uh, neutron star uh, uh, can cool down. But we have a data uh, for the, the cooling rate of these uh, specific uh, supernova and the neutron star. And to be compatible with the data, uh, this process uh, has to be um, negligible. That means the, uh, the interaction strength uh, uh, has to be small. So uh, FA, uh, by, by this constraint, uh, FA has to be larger than, turns out to be larger than 10 to the 9 GeV. And uh, from the previous distillation, that means the Q section mass has to be uh, smaller than about a uh, milli electron volt. And as a consequence, the uh, QC axion interacts uh, very weakly with the standard water particle. So uh, the QC axions are very hard to be observed in typical high energy collider experiments. Thus, uh, it is often called the invisible axion. And we need uh, alternative approaches like uh, high intensity or high precision experiments uh, to detect the QC axion, as I'll discuss later. Now, apart from the QC axion, uh, many new physics scenario uh, predict similar particles, which are not involved in the strong CP problem. And such candidates include uh, pseudo number Boson bosons in field theory and ground states of higher dimensional gauge fields in, in string theory. So pseudo number Boson boson in field theory is the uh, angular direction of a complex scalar field. And if the complex scalar field this has this uh, Mexican head shape potential, then uh, this angular direction is basically uh, massless because of this uh, flat form. And because of this uh, symmetric form of potential, this angular degree of freedom can be naturally light. And um, it has a periodicity because it's angular variable. So theoretically, it behaves very similarly to the QST axiom. And in string theory, uh, we have six small uh, spatial extra dimension on top of the observed four uh, large uh, space time. And this six extra dimension is necessary uh, for string theory to be, uh, to be consistent, mathematically consistent. And so there can be uh, many higher dimensional gauge fields in string theory. And uh, this figure shows the uh, schematic uh, view of this uh, small compact extra dimension, extra dimensional space. And uh, depending on the topology of this uh, extra dimensional space, there can be many different uh, ground states of uh, high dimensional gauge fields. And this ground state uh, looks like a scalar in four dimensional perspective, and they have uh, periodicity and they can be naturally light. So it exactly behaves uh, similarly to the, uh, theoretically similarly to the q axion. So these uh, particles are called axion-like particles. So uh, axion-like particle or OPS have essentially the same form of interaction as the q axion, except that OPS do not necessarily interact with gluons. And so the mass and coupling relation for the QC axion does not hold for them. And this is uh, uh, the general form of alpha Lagrangian, uh, which takes the same form as the QC axion Lagrangian. So again, these coefficients are again high energy physics uh, model dependent and generally of order one. So alpha interaction strength is characterized by a single parameter FA, often called the alpha decay constant. And in contrast to the QC axion, there is no mass and coupling relation for ALF. For instance, uh, if you consider axions in string theory, uh, the axion potential is given like this. 
So here MP is the uh, Planck mass, which is close to 10 to the 18 GeV. And S ins means the instanton action of various strange objects like uh, D-brain instanton and Wurzel instanton. So actions in string theory obtains its potential from such instanton effects. Um, and so from this uh, potential taking second derivative of the potential, we get uh, this formula for the action mass. And here MP is a fixed parameter. But uh, S instanton, instanton action actually depends on the specific string theory model. So it's not a fixed parameter. So even if FA is fixed, MA is not determined. So basically alpha mass and couplings are independent free parameters. And in particular, possible mass range is fast due to this exponential uh, dependence. As you know, uh, even the small change of this exponent can result in a, a huge change of this exponential. Uh, numerical value. So the alt mass can span um, best range of many different orders of uh, magnitude. But concerning the uh, alt coupling uh, for string theory axiom, uh, it's more or less determined. So it can be shown that for string theory axiom, FA has this relation with the uh, Planck mass and instanton action. And the instanton action is uh, estimated as a pi squared times the uh, XL dimensional volume. Here, XL dimensional volume is uh, given uh, in the unit of string length, and this is supposed to be uh, generally of order one. In principle, we can consider the large XL dimensions uh, compared with the, uh, the string length. But in such case, uh, the uh, string theory with large XL dimensions suffers several uh, complicated problems like proton decay. So normally, uh, the theoretically, the uh, order one XL dimension is preferred. So this quantity is typically uh, a pi square, that is uh, order of 100 uh, value, as I mentioned here. So if there's no large XL dimension, uh, FA is typically expected to be 10 to 16 GV. And because the action interaction strength is uh, given by the inverse of this FA, this implies very tiny coupling. And we have another uh, theoretically motivated uh, axiom. That is the axiom dark matter. Uh, so let's now discuss the uh, cosmological evolution of an axon field. In the early universe with the high temperature, the universe was expanding fast. And it turns out that it efficiently takes away the axon kinetic energy. And this is called the uh, Hubble friction. So this H is the Hubble parameter, which is proportional to the temperature of the universe scale divided by the Planck mass. So uh, in the early universe, this Hubble parameter is supposed to be uh, much bigger than the axion mass. And the Hubble friction is strong. So the axion field uh, moves very slowly over the potential. And as the universe cools down, at some point, this Hubble parameter becomes smaller than the axion mass. And uh, axion field uh, starts to oscillate around the potential minimum. And this oscillation amplitude um, gradually decrease because of the Hubble friction. So the action field undergoes the damped harmonic oscillation. And this uh, large harmonic oscillation uh, can be understood as uh, a sum of many small harmonic oscillator. And in quantum field theory, this small harmonic oscillator is, under, is interpreted as a particle excitation. So this axion field configuration can be understood as a macroscopic population of axion particle. And uh, this can be identified as the uh, dark matter component of the universe. So axion gives rise to uh, excellent candidate for dark matter. And this is the so-called misalignment production mechanism of axion dark matter. So initially this assume that the axion field uh, field value is uh, misaligned from the potential minimum by an order one misalignment angle. And it starts to oscillate uh, as the universe cools down and uh, its oscillation amplitude gradually decreases due to the Hubble friction. And the present oscillation amplitude is much smaller than the initial amplitude. 
And uh, presently, the action field configuration can be uh, approximated by this uh, uh, cosine form oscillating with the frequency of action mass. And the action energy density um, is uh, turns out to be uh, determined by this oscillation amplitude. And the present oscillation amplitude is determined from the initial amplitude and the action mass. So we get uh, this parametric relation for the uh, present uh, action energy density. So if this uh, present X and, and here this rho dm is the uh, means the the observed amount of dark matter of the universe. So if the energy if action explains the total amount of dark matter of the universe, then this ratio is equal to one. Then we have a, a certain relation between the uh, action mass and the uh, decay constant for the action dark matter. So this gives another uh, mass and coupling relation for the action dark matter scenario. So this is the summary of the theoretically motivated parameter space for axion in terms of action mass and the interaction strength. So uh, for the fused axion and the uh, misalignment axion dark matter, we have a certain uh, relation between the mass and the interaction strength. And as I said, the for string theoretic axion, the uh, typical uh, axion decay constant is expected to be around 10 to 16 GeV. And the uh, mass for the string theoretic axion can be in principle any value. And uh, FA uh, smaller than 10 to 9 GeV is disfavored or ruled out by the astrophysical bounds of, for the fused axion. And for the axion mass, we consider the uh, range, because consider the region between the uh, uh, 10 to the minus 22 electron volt and uh, kilo electron volt, because if the axion are uh, lighter than the 10 to the minus 22 electron volt, then the corresponding dual wavelength is larger than the uh, galaxy's size. And uh, it turns out it, it can, cannot be compatible with the observed, uh, observed uh, small scale structure of the universe. So uh, then action cannot explain the total amount of dark matter of the universe. In this sense, this uh, mass more than 10 to minus 22 is disfavored. And if action has a uh, coupling to photons, and if axion is heavier than kilo electron volt, then it, it quickly decays to photons and the dark matter axion becomes unstable. So for this mass range, axion cannot be dark matter. Yeah, so this is the uh, theoretically preferred uh, parameter space for axion. And now I will discuss how to, uh, how then we can discover the axions living in this parameter space. So first, uh, we have to ask, where may we get axions? The axions can be copiously produced from the sun. This is called the solar axions. So if axion has a, a coupling to photon and electron, then uh, axion can be produced from the sun by these uh, various processes. In the produced axion spectrum picked around the uh, kilo electron volt, which corresponds to the temperature of the sun, and the net axion flux at the Earth's position uh, is estimated at most uh, one per cubic centimeter. Uh, if the uh, axion coupling is as large as they can saturate the, the astrophysical bound. Axions can be also uh, produced from an intense laser beam, and this may be called lab axion. So assuming the axion photon coupling, we inject uh, intense laser beam uh, into strong magnetic field. Then from this vertex, the photon can be converted to axion. And the produced axion spectrum picked around the typical uh, laser photon frequency, the electron volt. And the uh, axion flux uh, within the current technology can reach to 0.1 cubic centimeter. So this is comparable with the solar axions within the uh, current best technology. And dark matter may be axion as we already discussed. Uh, and uh, we can estimate the number density of dark matter axion uh, because we know the local dark matter density 
Then if the action mass is around micro electron volt, then the, the expected action flux is 10 to 14 per cubic centimeter. So this is enormous intensity compared to the other sources, solar axions or lab axion. If the axion uh, constitute a major component of the whole dark matter density. By this reason, we will see that the, the most of axion search experiments uh, focusing on the search of this axion dark matter. Yet, uh, axion VM induced signal uh, will have a small frequency because of this axion field profile. And this may give rise to another challenge to detect those signals for uh, ultralight axion. Uh, the current technology, um, it's very hard to uh, detect some oscillating signal, uh, oscillating uh, lower than the uh, frequency one hertz. And one hertz corresponds to 10 to the minus 14 electron volt. So it's difficult to detect axion lighter than 10 to the minus 14 electron volt if axion is dark matter. And uh, after having uh, axions from such sources, we now have to detect axion to actually claim that the, we have discovered axion. And this axion detection can be done from, uh, uh, from the axion photon interaction. So assuming this axion photon interaction, uh, we may uh, use this axion photon conversion in the presence of magnetic field. And this is the uh, conventional method that has been used for the search of the uh, QC axion dark matter by this uh, cavity filled with a strong magnetic field. And here uh, we are looking for signal, uh, photon signal induced by a dark matter axion, QC axion dark matter axion. And recently, uh, an innovative uh, experimental setup was proposed. Uh, using this toroidal geometry that can greatly improve the sensitivity of uh, axion dark matter detection. And alternatively, we can use, uh, we can uh, see uh, the penalty violation in electromagnetic wave propagation uh, in the presence of axion dark matter. So the axion dark matter uh, breaks the parity symmetry. So the um, left-handed photon and right-handed photon have different phase velocity in the presence of axion dark matter. And this phase velocity difference can be measured by this particular type of interferometry. So this is a summary of the uh, current uh, status and the future prospects for hunting for axions by the axion photon interaction. Uh, so here, this color shade region is excluded uh, region uh, by the uh, previous experiment and the astrophysical uh, constraint. And uh, this dashed uh, region uh, corresponds to the uh, expected sensitivity of uh, various future experiment. Here, this OPS2 is trying to see the uh, lab axions. And IATSO is the uh, next generation telescope for detecting solar axions. And the other dash corresponds to the uh, experiment that are trying to detect dark matter axions. Uh, as you see, the dark matter axion shows much better sensitivity because of the, uh, the huge intensity uh, compared to the other axion sources. And uh, conventionally for a long time, actually the, uh, the dark and the axion search has been focused on this QC axion dark matter parameter space by the conventional resonant cavity method so uh, the many groups uh, uh, ruled out uh, part of this uh, QC axion dark matter space, but uh, there are still a lot to cover. And um, fortunately, as you see, uh, during the last five years, there has been uh, very remarkable progress in this field. And uh, now because of this innovative ideas, uh, we can expect that the, uh, the future experiment can cover uh, this substantial fraction of the uh, theoretical motivated parameter space uh, of the axion dark matter and the q axion. Well, unfortunately, uh, still, uh, it's very hard to touch the, this string theory of uh, parameter space.
And axiom detection can be also done by a, uh, using axiom fermion interactions. So we may uh, look at uh, nucleon or electron scattering of axions. Uh, for example, uh, xenon one tone, uh, look for this axial electric effect. So uh, similar to the photoelectric effect, the electron can be excited by observing uh, axion. And actually, uh, recently, xenon one tone reported a suspicious signal that can be explained by a solar axion or kilo electron volt axion dark matter. But at the moment, it's not clear that the signal is indeed from new physics like axion or uh, some poorly understood background. And uh, for non-relativistic axion, actually this interaction uh, can be interpreted as uh, uh, the axion induced uh, if, uh, effective magnetic field, uh, effective magnetic field, uh, which affects the uh, nucleon and electron spin. So we can uh, look for the uh, nucleon or electron spin change in, uh, by the influence of uh, background axion dark matter. So uh, we look at the, uh, we can do it uh, by the, the nuclear magnetic resonance technique or uh, proton storage ring technique. So here uh, protons are stored uh, in, the, in the storage ring and uh, we can observe the, the precession of the uh, proton spin in the, in the influence of the uh, uh, axion dark matter. And the axion dark matter also induce uh, oscillating nuclear EVM uh, by this interaction. And uh, this uh, effect can be also searched for uh, by NMR or uh, proton storage ring. So this is the uh, status and the uh, prospect for quantum for axions by the axion fermion interactions. Just this left plot shows the, the case of the axion nucleon coupling. And the right plot is for axion electron coupling. This uh, shaded region is excluded by the astrophysical uh, constraint. And we have this uh, theoretical motivated parameter space. And this dashed line is the corresponds to the, the expected sensitivity of future experiment. And here you see, unfortunately, uh, the, the future expected sensitivity uh, still cannot touch this uh, theoretical motivated parameter space, except that the quarks experiment can cover uh, part of the QC axiom parameter space. So this means that uh, it's much more challenging to deal with the axion fermion coupling uh, compared to the axion photon coupling. And uh, for the, this axion fermion interaction, the uh, solar axion or lab axion uh, cannot give a meaningful constraint beyond this astrophysical bound. So only the dark matter axion can give uh, uh, this uh, good sensitivity currently. But as I discuss from now on, um, actually, uh, this axion fermion coupling measurement is very important for proving uh, high energy physics for axions. So there are uh, three possible classes of short distance physics or high energy physics for axions. Uh, the first class of uh, models is uh, so-called dyne fischler uh, srebnicki chetinsky like uh, type axions. So for this class of model, axion has direct couplings to standard mode fermions, while it couples to uh, the standard mode gauge bosons from quantum process, uh, from this uh, loop process. So for this class of model, the axion uh, fermion coupling is larger than the uh, axion gauge boson coupling. On the other hand, we have um, Kim Schupmann, Feinstein, and Zaharoff type axions. And for this class of axion, axion couples to the uh, standard model particles only through quantum process uh, by, uh, by this heavy uh, exotic fermion. So for this class of uh, models, the axion gauge boson coupling is uh, bigger than the uh, axion fermion coupling. And finally, uh, for string theoretic axion, axion turns out to be able to directly couple to both fermions and gauge bosons. 
So yeah, their, their, their interaction strengths are comparable. And this is due to the fundamentally different origin of string theory axion identified as a high dimensional gauge field rather than the base of a complex scalar field. So we uh, examine uh, carefully the quantum effect for each class of axion, that is the renormalization group effect. And we conclude that the microscopic origin of axions can be uncovered by precisely measuring the ratio between certain axon fermion coupling and axon photon coupling. So this left plus shows the, um, the ratio between the axon electron coupling and axon photon coupling. And here you see uh, the ratio is clearly different for these three classes of um, UV physics for axion. And this axon electron coupling is important for the QC axion and the axon like particles uh, to discriminate the, their microscopic origin. And for the case of axon like particle without a coupling to gluon, the axon nucleon coupling. The ratio of the axon nucleon coupling to axon photon coupling can be also uh, used as a discriminator be, uh, among these three classes of uh, UV physics. But uh, for the class of QC axion, for the case of QC axion, this cannot be used as a discriminator because uh, the, uh, the two of them uh, uh, shows a similar, similar uh, ratio. So in particular, this uh, offers us an exciting possibility to test the string theory by low energy fusion measurements. So we believe that um, this provides um, important motivations for physics community to develop better precision for the measurement of axon fermion coupling, although it, it will be very challenging. So let me summarize. Um, the QCD axion and axon-like particles and axon dark matter have their own strong theoretical motivations and predict relevant ranges for axon mass and couplings. And those parameter spaces, however, predict quite small couplings that are difficult to be proved using available axon sources. And unfortunately, recently significant progress has been made for the axon photon coupling uh, based on the axon dark matter detection which can cover a uh, major part of ultralight axon dark matter parameter space. And currently project sensitivity for axon fermion couplings, unfortunately, mostly cannot touch the theoretical motivated axon parameter space. And the development for precise measurement of this axon fermion couplings will tell us important clues for underlying short distance, short distance physics once an axon is discovered. Okay, uh, thank you. That's what I prepared. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much for your nice talk. Okay, uh, we have may have some questions um, uh, from you. So you feel free to ask any question. I like I like your plot on this the set angle for neutron idiom. Uh -huh. Kind of yeah, yeah. intuitive Actually, this picture. Is not invented by me. It's uh, <laughs> I adapted from uh, Anson Hook's uh, mm. paper. Mm. Yeah, yeah. This I think this is a nice understanding of the strong physics problem. So, kind of classical picture. Yeah. Uh, to make this uh, quarks aligned right in one direction. And this oh. discrepancy uh, mm -hmm. originated from uh, the, the technical loop factor and the mass difference between the uh, quark and the pion mass. Mm -hmm. so it gives right to the this 10 to the minus three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a difference. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, I have some question on the con concerning the action uh, detection. Uh, mm -hmm. 
so you so in some cases you don't have to make assumption on the documental abundance but in some cases you need to you need some you need the extra information from the documental abundance like and the normal density of actions so those are uh, but the, those are uh, uh, kind of experimental uh, limits or perfect prospects they are all on top of each other in the same plot so uh, maybe we need to distinguish between different limits but uh, recently there are some uh, kind of general I mean I mean if you generalize the action production mechanism uh, I mean the of course is a uh, is a uh, it depends on the extra assumption. What do you think about that? I mean, this whether we can have the full component uh, documenta in any of parameter space in this plot, or uh, I mean, you have a new signatures depending on uh, the new production mechanisms. For instance, action uh, kind of action kination and that uh, draws. Yeah some attention recently. Right. Yeah, for the case of action kination, uh, this parameter space can be uh, raised to this higher point and it's it's uh, much more accessible by um, this experiments. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so here uh, I introduced the standard parameter space for uh, action dark matter. Mm -hmm. And I think the, um, well, I have also studied uh, this action kination mechanism, but it seems um, quite a natural parameter mm. alignment is necessary mm. for actually realize this mm. scenario. Mm. Yeah, so if we consider natural parameter space, actually mm. the, uh, the improvement is not so great compared to this standard scenario. Mm. So yeah, I, I, I doubt that the this mm. alternative mechanism, mm. uh, how much it can help the situation. Mm. I see. Yeah, actually this sensitivity are all based on the axion uh, explains the total amount of dark matter. If axion only um, constitutes a fraction of the dark matter, then the sensitivity should be scaled according to it. So yeah, the the, the sensitivity line has to be uh, raised, decreased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so not only action kination, uh, but also uh, so whether the PQ symmetry is broken after or before inflation, uh, you could have uh, extra contribution from domain or, or strings uh, to the action abundance. And That's right. Yeah. So those uh, could uh, change your parameter space. Uh, uh, That's right. Maybe. Uh, so I'm also interested in this uh, yeah, possibility. Mm. And uh, but so actually, I just uh, did a very crude estimation of the mm. the the expected amount of dark matter from such um, uh, such a scenario. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's actually very hard to enhance the action dark matter density compared to this misalignment protection mm -hmm. mechanism for ultra light vision. Mm -hmm. So we know that we know that the, for the QST axion, it can be uh, sizably different from the misalignment protection mechanism if the axion is produced many produced from such topological defects. Mm -hmm. But for ultra light axion, um, it's hard. Uh, they they are similar or uh, slightly uh, bigger than the uh, uh, misalignment mm -hmm. action document mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so unfortunately in this case also, I think uh, it doesn't help us much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also this alpha document, uh, you assume that the actual mass does not depend on temperature. Uh, typically you don't uh, that's right. Make an assumption. Uh, you make uh, you assume that the actual mass is temperature independent. That's so right. if, uh, I don't know, but it's an extra parameter. But uh, mm -hmm. if uh, you parameterize uh, temperature dependent of the action 
like particle mass. Yeah. Uh, somehow, so you parameterize some in some way, and then maybe it could be different from the QC reaction. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it may be different from this uh, uh, this plot, right? <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. In that case, the slope of this line can be changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh, you can for oh, yeah, the slope can be uh, can be greater. If uh, is I mean uh, yeah okay uh, if uh, mm. okay maybe it's always like have a tendency mm -hmm. going toward the QCD uh, like action right I mean it, yeah yeah that's is right. it possible to make the slope sl smaller maybe not. Mm -hmm. Mm, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, yeah, as far as if I remember correctly, yeah, yeah. Uh, if external mass has temperature dependence, then mm, the mm. obvious always tends to toward this QC action. Toward the, the QC action. Mm. Okay, so I have I, I asked some questions, so maybe you may have some time to think about some questions from you, from the audience. Are you fine with this nice seminar? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that I could make some uh, um, regional question actually, <laughs> because I'm ignorant on this subject. But uh, uh, first of all, uh, in this diagram, uh, since you showed it, uh, these three lines do not have the single point overlapping. So, mm -hmm. uh, so one of them, one of the three is are wrong. Then must be wrong. Mm. Ah, yeah. Maybe. No, no, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the miss ah, so. uh, QC reaction or misalignment, and the typical string alps. Yeah. So uh, you could adjust the parameters so that uh, all three lines could meet at the, the same region. Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's an excellent question. Yeah. So uh, for the QCD axion, uh, QCD axion is characterized by the axion gluon coupling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here, for typical string job, I assume that there's no uh, axion gluon coupling. That's mm. why these lines are different, uh -huh. and and um, and of course, QCD action and string up can meet at some point, but in that case, uh, the QCD action is hard to explain the observed amount of dark matter. Uh -huh. Actually, for this point, the uh -huh. uh, dark matter abundance is uh, bigger than the observed amount. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if we can, that... tune, we can mm -hmm. tune the parameter, uh, mm -hmm. the initial misalignment angle that the QCD action still explains the, the abundance of dark matter. So yeah, yeah. by tuning over the parameter, actually um, the three lines can be met in, in, in some sense. Um, right, right. So uh, uh, usually uh, we, we just display that so that uh, these three constraints mm -hmm. meet at least meet at this one point. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, all right, that, that's just curious. Yeah. Yeah, and so about this uh, diagram for the classical uh, picture of QCD actions. Mm -hmm. uh, so is it impossible to just uh, explain this alignment just using this uh, Coulomb interaction, Coulomb force and the strong force. Oh, why you, why they yeah, that's, introduced uh, a dynamical field? Yeah, that's a very good question. So actually this theta is a uh, rigid parameter in the standard model. It's, it's mm. so even if we have a strong interaction and electric interaction, uh, this theta is there is another another I mean the kind of strong force that fits uh -huh. this theta. Uh -huh. 
Ah. Within the standard yes. model. Oh. Yeah. So the axion relax this constraint. Oh. Simply so that the Q, the strong interaction and EM interaction can relax spontaneously relax down to the set up to zero. Oh. I see. Uh, but it's it's somewhat geometrical one. So um, I, I thought this up uh, uh attract with uh, these down quarks so that mm -hmm. they be, try to become closer. However, uh, because mm -hmm. they have uh, different charges. However, uh, these dark quarks, uh, uh, no, not this up quark. Uh, the strong force would be opposite, the repulsive. Uh, but, but you are saying that there is another kind of strong field uh, described by this SETA. Yeah. And what is the basic nature of that, that uh, force or interactions? Why they make this up quark in between down quarks? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So actually, the interaction is the same type of strong interaction. There's no oh. other, other case case volume here. Oh. Uh, we have gluon uh, only for oh. strong interaction. Mm. Yeah, but uh, um, well, basically, I I, I thought uh, the quarks becomes free when they become closer. Oh. Mm -hmm. But then I cannot explain this uh, Coulomb interactions, the, the collision due to the Coulomb interactions. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, it's simple-minded. Uh, it's just to use the uh, interactions and try to explain this alignment, uh, strong interaction and uh, strong force and just Coulomb force. Anyway, this, this thing uh, also happens in other particles, other, uh, other configuration of quarks, right? Yeah, yeah, protons. So uh, all they uh, gave this uh, parameter value, uh, what is the theta is but uh, very small, 10 yeah. to minus 10 or like that, right? Ah, so for the proton EDM case, there is a similar oh. bound, but the proton EDM is much harder to be measured compared with the neutron EDM. So the bound is. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the the question is important to watch the why this theta is rigid in the standard model in terms of the. Dynamics potential, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, my understanding is not enough to explain it intuitively now. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to have intuitive or very easy explanation of this oh, yeah, alignment. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So maybe it's not that easy, it's a quantum, pro quantum process, it's the loop diagrams. You need to draw some loop diagrams at mm -hmm. the level of uh, nu nucleons, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So leaving this to Russia. So uh, the, the, the classical uh, picture uh, wouldn't work. We should consider some quantum yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, some one of that. As I remember, it's a one of diagram. Mm -hmm. You need to compute one of diagram. Like a right. so one Separation is... I think due to this uh, Pauli exclusion. Hmm. It is similar to the hydrogen atom. You know, this mm -hmm. Pauli version uh, maintains the size of hydrogen atom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if the, you know, the, the proton and electron is attracted by mm -hmm. the electromagnetic interaction, but the Pauli exclusion Repurgent uh, makes the proton size uh, uh, fixed. And similarly, the neutron size fixed by the uh, balance between them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
you hear me? I'm done. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, okay, are there more uh, questions? Question from undergraduate students. Some students, maybe. There's no stupid question, so <laughs> you may ask any anything you, you wonder. Yeah, you have both. Uh, I want to ask a question. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, Shintaro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, could you go back to the uh, diagram which showed the uh, prediction of the string action, QC action, and the misalignment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this one is okay, but uh, you also showed the uh, uh, coupling with uh, nucleon and the photon, right? Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, 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 you draw the misalignment uh, purple line by fixing the dark matter abundance, right? Then uh, you get the relation between decay constant and the action mass. So we can draw this kind of line. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but the, this coupling, the uh, bar, vertical line, G A N, is mm -hmm. not uh, uh, equal to the decay constant precisely, right? It right. contains yeah. some uh, uh, model dependent uh, uh, coefficient. Precisely. So, yeah. So, such model dependence may shift uh, the purple line. The prediction of misalignment. Uh, exactly. Uh, so I, I wonder how this line uh, change uh, by you consider another, how to say, uh, if you consider uh, other type of uh, mod models. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's a very good question. So here actually, there is, uh, so I show that the um, this order one parameter here. Mm. So the diagram is uh, drawn with the assumption that this parameter is over order one. But in principle, this parameter can be can take uh, any uh, integer value. So mm. if this integer, if this value is uh, some large integer value, then uh, we can draw the line, we can uh, elevate, we can raise a line to uh, this, for instance, then the yeah future experiment can touch such parameter space. And actually, when you know the any integer uh, parameter in the theory is naturally of order one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and th this is actually uh, due to the periodicity of the axiom. So the axion coupling is quantized because of the periodicity of axion. So if we consider only a single axion, then the naturally the, the coefficient Cn uh, is supposed to be order one. But if we consider multiple axion, mm -hmm. then uh, there will be heavy axions and light axion. After integrating out heavy axion, we may get some um, exotic structure for the light axion coupling, hierarchical uh, coupling mm -hmm. structure. And that's the so-called clock of mechanism or alignment mechanism. And in that case, uh, we can uh, obtain uh, the large integer value. Uh, but uh, you know, this needs uh, some kind of uh, some more elaborated structure for the uh, underlying underlying UV physics. Mm -hmm. So here I, I, I uh, consider only the simplest possibility. But in principle, yeah, somehow such multiple axion alignment is natural, then we can also consider the, uh, this parameter space as well. So such a model with large coefficient uh, may be, uh, how to say, will be constrained by the future observation more, more severely. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. Oh, thank you, I understand. Actually, okay. yes, there are there are numerable studies uh, concerning this 
the clock of axion that can uh, that can be proved by these future experiments. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, from phenomenology <coughs> and to every completion of the actual physics uh, uh, is interesting. Uh, also, I mean, in connection to UV physics, although you discussed separately <coughs> the origin of action interaction or potential, you may have some UV dependent contribution to the action potential. So, I mean, so called uh, action quality problem. So maybe there might be some model dependent uh, uh, model dependence also even in uh, QCD action. I mean, the, in this category of QCD action models, can you comment on this? And what is the st status of this uh, uh, action quality problem in the sense that the the action mass uh, could be sensitive to UV physics? And also the minimum uh, of the action potential uh, could be uh, UV sensitive. How to uh, constrain uh, UV physics, for instance? <clears throat> because with string theory, you have some UV composition, so you can, yeah, in principle, yeah. you can predict. Uh, That's right. But the, yeah. if, if you don't know the UV physics, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you know, uh, there are. So this is a, this is the most serious problem actually. The, the drawback of this QCD action solution to the strong city problem, uh, actually, yeah. So this minimum value is very sensitive to the some other contribution to the action potential, other than the this QCD action uh, QCD interaction. And even the Planck scale physics can change the. Uh, theta larger than 10 to the minus 10, so that the strong CP problem is reintroduced. So that's the action quality problem. And uh, as you know, there are a number of uh, ways that can resolve the problem by uh, some uh, model construction for uh, field theory action, case fees like action, DFS like action. But I think the most straightforward solution is obtained from the string theory of axions. Uh, where the axion potential is much more controllable because for string theory axion, the axion obtains potential uh, sometimes only from this uh, uh, stringy instant on effect. So the uh, we can efficiently we can uh, efficiently uh, the the put aside all the uh, other instant on effect that can uh, change the, the the potential minimum of the uh, action potential. But uh, the drawback of string theory action, of course, that the this decay constant is hard to be lower than 10 to 16 GV. Yeah, so I think, yeah, there's no clear and uh, perfect solution to this problem. Uh, of course, we have uh, some complicated models. Yeah. So, yeah. There's no <laughs> particularly clear resolution. The, the, of course, the there are many variations of action, a minimal action models. Like uh, if you introduce a uh, large potential, extra potential, and then keep the minimum of the action potential, just increase action mass. And yeah. uh, so that- oh, you, mean, you mean heavy, heavy Q action scenario? Yeah, heavy action. Mostly uh, yeah, that model is very ugly and it contains yeah. kind of fine tuning. You know, because, to maintain the minimum of the right. potential. Yeah. Um, yeah. You need to tune some parameter right. in your theory. But this, uh, nonetheless, I mean, this, I, I don't follow the details of, of this action kination recently, but the, they need some amount of explicit, explicit breaking of PQ symmetry uh, uh -huh. in order to realize yeah. initial condition for the kination. That's right. And the, just I was asking myself, the, what are the action quality problem? What is the action quality problem in that uh, case? Just to uh, 
you could ah, so, kind yeah. of uh, they, they claim that the, the explicit pq breaking is small enough not to spoil the this uh action solution to the strong cpu problem but right. even even by that small explicit breaking they can uh they claim that they can uh, reproduce the the Mm -hmm. the recurrent amount of this external field oscillate on uh, the rotation. Mm -hmm. I see. So just to, uh, my, my, my question is how to diversify this uh, simple vanilla scenario for Hughes reaction, just to, uh, yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, even if there's a type, maybe you, you might have in a, in a time fine tuned situation, uh, but you could uh, maybe you could have new interesting phenomena like uh, I don't know some other probe of action uh, if you have uh, extra uh, like extra dynamics maybe the like action kination for instance in the case of action kination I think we had John club recently on the production of the I mean, the, the detection of the uh, primordial gravitational waves uh, because of the action kination domination, you could have uh, sensitivity. Uh -huh. okay. So th those are kind of, we are opening new window to probe action uh, physics, not only uh, conventional uh, action searches. Yeah. So uh, just personally, I wonder if uh, it is compatible uh, with the actual solutions to the strong CP problem. Or if you, I don't know, if you forget about QCD action, just to take the any arc scenario, yeah. and just to generalize it somehow. Mm -hmm. so just yeah, to... yeah, yeah. Inter inter interesting question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you may mean the, the recent work by Geraldine on. on um, yeah, but I, I didn't follow the details of the model. Uh, but yeah, you can check whether it's compatible with the 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 excellent solution to the strong CP problem. But yeah, I guess it will be hard because you may require quite a large express breaking to generate the gravitation observable gravita gravitational waves. Mm. Okay, thank you for your comment. Uh, I think that we uh, have some good question and comment and feedback. Okay. So thank you uh, all uh, for your participant and uh, thank you for your nice talk, uh, Dr. Im. Hopefully we'll uh, see again in person in the future uh, in the IBS or in Zhuang University, you can come here in person. Yeah, probably right. next year. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. And, uh, yeah. see you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, you